for those who are just watching from this point on, I don't know how I'm going to edit this, but I'm wearing this special shirt only because T-shirt day screwed up my, my transmog. And if I'm not wearing one of the shirts, I have, I'm only going to be in my bra and I refuse to do this particular analysis with just a bra on. So, okay. What is this about? <clears throat> so, let me get this up. So the Ian's Fringe quests uh, are part of uh, 10.1.5 and the, what is it called? <laughs> A second i am i always decide to add stuff to what i'm going to say before i say it i will even start this over um 10.1.5 fractures in time okay so the infringe quests um dailies are part of fractures in time 10.1.5 and once you go through a few initial setups for it uh, every day you get a different quest. It cycles through. I've now seen several of them twice. Uh, uh, Lane Rin hop popped up last week for the first time. I don't know if they're going to be adding any more after that. But uh, you get them every week. And most of, it, most of it, and I'm going to say, even my analysis I'm about to do is strictly for fun. Tin foil hat fun. Uh, theorizing um, but you there's the idea as I understand it is that something is causing the timelines to bleed into each other including alternate timelines so people from your past come in from your timeline come into your present but also from alternate ones can kind of bleed in um, everything from slight shifts in the original timeline that you have to put back on track to people from the past in your timeline showing up in the present that need to be sent back so things can continue as they were. Uh, while some, like finding young Anduin's Hearthstone card or helping Vol'jin find his mojo, are fairly straightforward, get them their thing so they can go back and then the timeline can continue. I mean, including Nathanos, you have to kill some ducks because he's afraid that he hates them and you send him back. Uh, so as much as you might want to keep him around and go, no, I'm not, I, a night elf, am not sending you back. Um, but some are a little bit, you know, might be suggestive of other things. Again, um, going back to put ice rocks so that invincible trips and um, Arthas falls and that sets him on his path of evil. Um or you break up Taronda and Malfur and sorry Taronda and Illidan, and um, you help Malfurion out and Illidan. It just that you sets him on his path. I think those are just fun little suggestions that oh well now you had a, you had a hand in that somehow um, on the positive side. You know saving placing Alexstrasza's egg in another location so Ronan can find it and thus help free her. Uh, and it's it's either you're you're tweaking little things that that have been changed in the past just so they could still continue upon their original trajectory, um, you know, or and or just make sure that people are where they should be, uh, and there's one where other where, however, it looks like people might come there because you're there. Uh, they know you're there, or somehow they know they're supposed to be there at a certain point. And there's two things like that. One is yourself, as the opposing faction, uh, comes in to recruit your help to take out a third version of you that had succumbed to Fell, which I think is suggesting actually Ashara, and this is you if Ashara had succumbed to Fell, um, or because it mentions the queen and I'm pretty sure they mean Ashara, not Taronda's queen of fell. I don't, I don't, I may have missed where they mentioned that. The other one is this one where it's still, you have to do things to keep thing on track, then keep things on track versus 
some peculiarities about it that, well, let's get into it. We know which one this is. It's the Black Prince Parade. <laughs> and as I said, if you've been watching me on this channel enough, you knew I was probably going to go into this one at length at some point. Okay, so let's get on with it. <sighs> and I really wasn't going to do this tonight, and I walked in and I was like, God damn it! <laughs> so, I find it funny that Chromie is not giving you this one, because Chromie has expressed not being very fond of Rathian in the past. Um, but who knows? Okay, anyway, let's talk to Bob. Hey, Bob. Black Prince, Black Prince Parade. Perhaps I could do better at talking today than yesterday. Five separate portals opened up here at the same time and the same person stepped out of each one. Now we have an in full of Rathians. All different ages, dealing with different things in their own lives and very eager to blame each other for their problems. That's, that itself is interesting. Um, it's like, if you weren't aware that he was self-aware, he's self-aware. <laughs> uh, let's get them all back to their proper times before they cause too much trouble. <laughs> Send each Rathian back to the time, uh, to, back to his time through his time portal, through his temporal portal. But, and you can hear the little squawking in back. That's, that's the, um, here we go. What do they all say? How can you? Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna sit here, like, just look here for a while. I mean, who's he's like? Oh, he's okay. Now. Okay, so it's hard to miss the initial conversation between these two. Um, oh, there's another player in here now. <laughs> I want you to notice he mentions the Obsidian Citadel. Uh, let's see. But the initial conversation between these two, which is... This is the one that's in currently in the chamber of a heart in Silithus next to the giant sword. Um, this one's at the Obsidian Shrine and um, Dragon Blight. I believe around the time of the Deaths of Chromi, it is the Legion is still a factor, so that would kind of put him there. Uh, but the original conversation between those two was this one, little one. <laughs> I released Garrosh, and all that came of it was death and suffering. And now the Legion is going to destroy everything, just as I said it would, but it's my fault. Um, how can you be at ease after all the bloodshed you caused, he says to this one. Uh, who responds with, I'm not in the mood for personal reflection. And then they just keep repeat this cycle of what they're saying. Uh, you know that this one, who's the, pen, the one from Pandaria, knows about the Obsidian Citadel which is in the Dragon Isles. Um, this one, of the ones that you've met, this one is the one that's in the Chamber of the Heart, so you know that you have. You, well, it gets complicated. Let's go each one by one in order, and we're going to deal with this. Um, left and right are here. <laughs> they are with him. They are technically probably watching all of them, but they are they are here with him. Um, by the aspects, you are so immature. The youngest one is saying this. Now. So here's the summary. Here's what we're looking at. We have Rath we have Rathian from five different points in time. But they all seem to be part 
of the same timeline you're in. So these don't seem to be alternate timelines. This is all part of the timeline you're in. Um, and depending how long you've played the game and what your class or character is, you may have encountered all of these um, during their respective time periods. Um, so this isn't a matter of correcting something that went wrong, shockingly enough. Um, this is to make sure things continue as they are by wa dealing with whatever reason why they're here <laughs> and letting them go back and do all the shit they did because they always have done it. Um, one quick way of looking at this is Rathian's been to this inn five times. You've only been here once. Well, forgetting the fact that it's a repeatable quest. You've only been here once at this moment in time, even though you can do different things each time. So none are alternate timelines. They, they all seem to be aware they're from different points in time. So they know they are looking at themselves at a different point in time. He also doesn't seem very happy with himself. That's besides the point. Um, but he is aware of when and where he is. And you can get that just by watching this dialogue cycle through. Um, they know they're on the Dragon Isles. And there's one thing we can realize that when we send them back, if they've overheard anything, they know more than when they arrive there. Now, what they were paying attention to is another issue. <laughs> Clearly, some are more surprised by news than others, even though they've come to this point in time multiple times. So, if I haven't lost you yet. Now, yeah, it's, they all get advanced knowledge. Some may be here intentionally for that reason. And what they do with that knowledge, or even if they remember it, is different depending on where he is in his life and maturity. So let's start with the youngest one. The Weltling. I think the reason why the rest of them are here is because of this one. More or less. Um, I'm going to actually blame these two. And why? What do I mean by that? Um... This is the Pendar, Rathian. If you're going to say anything, the worst of the bunch. <laughs> um, and, well, not entirely terrible. He has his moments even, even then. He's very sure of his plan and where he wants to go with it. Uh, but he is the one that seemed to have no problem screwing with timelines. He uh, quoted with Kairos, Kairos Dormu, who is the one who helped free Garrosh and send him to alternate Draenor. Um, and Rathian even says at one point, uh, you know, when mentioning of fixing things in the past and changing things in the past, and I like the way you think, which is like, yipes. Um, <laughs> he seemed to see tinkering with the past as a type of strategy very dangerous thinking so if anyone's going to be like look certain things need to happen for that to happen I need to make sure I'm in this place at a specific time and his memory by this point because something that's happened has always happened you get a time paradox I don't want to break my brain on that right now but he knew at some point he ended up in a place where he saw his youngest self and these older versions of himself. So he's the one most likely to say, Kairos Dorma, I need you to go back and send my youngest self as a well playing in Ravenholt Manor. Ravenholt Manor. There's your instructions. Return to Ravenholt Manor. Um, has to be there. I have to be there. Some whiny one who's upset about some legion or other has to be there. <laughs> me talking about wanting needing to write a letter to Anduin. Whether he even knows who Anduin is at this point, who knows? 
in Pandera. I don't, we don't know where he is at the time, pan, during the Pandera timeline. And then this one you keep telling me about, um, was off. So, this is the one that I would, this, it was this one that was the architect for this even happening. And then it kicks off with this one. What the whelp is seeing right now and what the whelp manages to observe is pretty much I'm in a room with myself and I don't like any of them. Um, and I mean, you can technically in the quest send them back in any order, but I like to send them back in time order. So um, if you send back the whelpling, he only gets to see to a certain point of what happens. In any case, the whelpling recognizes you, if no one else. If your character is a rogue, here's my first assumption. If your character is a rogue, when you get to Ravenhold Manor. This version of Rathian doesn't show up with a visage. When you first meet Rathian, he's in visage form. This little weird looking kid over here. It's the closest you come. He's younger, but that's the version that's there. This is where Rathian first sees you. This is where Rathian first sees what visage he's going to have. And again, time paradox. It happened because it always happened and always will happen. He selects that visage before he acknowledges you in the basement. And of course, I'm not suggesting that the developers knew they were going to do this quest back when they did the start of the Fangs of the Father quest line. Which, that's what it is. When you find his egg that had hatched in Ravenholt Manor. It's the start of that quest. It's around the start of that quest, I should say. Um, I'm not saying they knew that. I'm not saying this is a retcon. What I'm saying is this is enhancing upon the story that already existed. So, only true for rogues. Um, this could be suggesting that he already knew who you were and how to appear to you when you show up in the basement of Ravenholt Manor. And it could be why he didn't kill you outright, because he was going to do that, but that he also decided, including your skill of being super stealthy and getting past all the people in Ravenholt Manor, um, that you were useful to him. What he meant by useful ended up meaning a lot more <laughs> by the time you get to this one. So, it, 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 it's that, like, yeah, he, he knew who you were from the very start. Um, how much he knew even then, who knows? Did he know if you helped helped create the egg? I don't know. But he did seem to be aware of that, as we actually found out that if you go into Abris and you've done that quest line, quest line in the Badlands, where you create Rathian, basically, he says you were there at my creation at one point. So he may have known about you even before Ravenholt. So, yeah, that... but. Let's not even go there. We're just going to stick right now with the end. <laughs> Let's not even go there yet. We knew he was aware in the egg. We, don't, we didn't know we could see through it and see what you looked like. Anyway, point is, if you're a rogue, at the, at the very least, he knew you were who you were when, he, when you were in the basement and he found you there. So we're going to send you back, little one. He won't even talk to you. Like, you have no talk option. You just have Toss Rathian. Uh, I'm, am I just going to be nice this time and not throw him at himself? Because... <laughs> I, 
just like how upset with himself he is. <laughs> it's like, I'm glad you sense it too. I I'm glad you go through this as well, because you know, um, okay, I have to throw him once somewhere else where he doesn't belong. <laughs> Don't worry, he doesn't get hurt. He just pops back where he was. Okay, I had to do that at least once. I, you know, I have to. Alright. So, we're gonna throw him back to Ravenholt. <sighs> I thought it might be in here. I'm like, got a little bit of lag. There's Ravenholt. Yep. Bye. So he's back in Ravenholt Manor. So. The next one here is Pandaria uh, Rathian. Now you don't know exactly where he is um, in the Pandaria timeline. He doesn't acknowledge I you. I must remain hidden so that I remain free. He doesn't acknowledge you at all. Um, now there are two reasons. There's, there's the obvious reason that all of his Pandarian content, all of his content in Pandaria, his quest lines, had been removed from the game. So there's a good chance that most players didn't even encounter him by now. They all, the most they may have is if they were in Pandaria, they went to um, Tavern in the Mist and they saw him sitting there and could just click him in, get him like a, hey, how are you, whatever, and he doesn't even say that. Um, and that's it. That's as far as they get. So he doesn't acknowledge you. Nothing personal. It's probably just <laughs> developers didn't bother putting dialogue to the effect. But I think what's actually more interesting is what he does say. Because he doesn't talk about anything happening in Pandaria. He doesn't talk about what's going on. You know it's Pandaria because you know that's where you're sending him back to. Uh, time for it was Stormwinds. Veiled Stair. Yeah, that's Tavern in the Mist. Um, so you know that's where you're sending him after you pay his tab. But you could pay his tab by clicking on there or talking to him. But we're going to talk to him for a second. A new era is beginning. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, they're all fools, so busy bicking, we could have claimed the Obsidian Citadel by now. He's not even concerned about events in Pandaria, which is why I think he caused all this. <laughs> he's why they're all here. Uh, because he's at the point where he's messing with Kairos Dormu to get uh, Garrosh out of Pandaria. But he's still in the Tavern of the Mist, so we know he hasn't thrown his tantrum yet and flown off. <laughs> so uh, Garrosh hasn't been defeated yet. But, because that's that's what he does after Garrosh is defeated. But uh, it, it's a classic scene. If you can look it up, I highly recommend him throwing a major temper tantrum and then turning into a little weapon, flapping off angrily. Um, and then following that, the well, flapping angrily because, you know, that, well, you can't do it, but if you watch it, I, I did it. I don't have cover footage of it, but I definitely followed him and he goes all the way across the zone. A little angry little well. Uh, but... <laughs> Sometimes you think that was the last UT of them. But no. Anyway. So my guess is this is somewhere between possibly earlier in Pandaria. Um, but he doesn't acknowledge you. He's focused on the Obsidian Citadel, which is something that's happening in your present. So he's very aware of what's going on. Not everything. He's, he probably overheard the stuff about the Legion. Get to that in a second. I don't think he's listening about to the part about Nazoth. He's very focused on we're in the Dragon Isles. We should be Aspect. We should take the Obsidian Citadel. He's focused on current events. This one. Um, which makes me think he's like, yeah, I need to be in this spot at a certain time before the versions of myself because there's information I need. Which brings me to why is he here? He's information gathering. He's there strictly to gather information and run up a tab. <laughs> this is perfectly in character. Um, yeah, it's it's. Oh. He he 
he comes a long way from this point, but it's still, he's still at that point. Um, he's so fixated on his, this purpose he has set for himself of being the, the earth water and guarding Azeroth by any means necessary, even if it means freeing someone who has their mind sent on genocide. Um, and not thinking that maybe that person doesn't really give a shit about a legion invasion. <laughs> And is not going to take orders from anybody. Whatever made you think Garish Hellscream was going to do that. But sure. Cool. Um, <laughs> free him. He doesn't think he can do any wrong at this point. He really doesn't. He's so sure of himself. So. Yeah, so I mean... I, I just don't think he says more than what he says because most players who started playing after Mr. Pandaria have never done any quest line with him. And it doesn't matter whether you've done a road quest. He doesn't acknowledge you for that either. And I just think it's like they weren't going to do extra dialogue for, for that includes the Fame of the Father quest stuff um, for this little bit here. It would have been nice, it would have been cool, but you know, uh, yeah, they, you can't think of a very possible scenario. So this one hasn't paid his tab. So we're going to pay his tab because we're going to get him out of here because maybe he doesn't need to over here more than he already has. But I'm actually thinking he's here spying. That is his purpose. His purpose is like, I know I'm in this place in time. There's information that I want, I need to know about the Dragon Isles and the Obsidian Citadel and becoming an aspect and I need to go back there and hear it. So Kairos, make this happen, and I'll help you in whatever you want to do. And Kairos is working with the Infinites, I believe. So this is all happening because of the Infinites. The time risk, we're pretty sure, is the Infinites are, are doing something. So it ties in that way. Again, theoretical tin tinfoil hat fun only, but, you know, bear with me because we're not done yet. Anyway, let's go pay his tab. Yes, you are. You're done here. Oh, yeah. Yes, you are, Prince. <laughs> Thank you, left. Thank you, right. Pleasure as always. So now we're left with these three. We don't... There's... We don't ever really get to talk to... We don't get to talk to him... Well, we'll get to that in a second. Let's go to this one. Um, we're going to talk to him to get what he says here, but we're not going to do his part because these two leave at the same time. So. I believe an individual can have an enormous impact on the world. Yes, sir, I think it's funny you should say that. Insufferable, the lot of them. They don't even realize what their ambition has wrought. There's only two times in the game more than that but Arathian owns up to his shit <laughs> to, to you basically um, this is one the other is his journal um, which you find in uh, prior to him showing up in 8.3 in, in Battle for Azeroth um which you find out was actually left for you to find. Because he, in the end, you realize he's addressing you. But it looks like by that point, he had kind of come to terms and was set out to like, I now have another thing to focus on. Um, I'm not giving up. Well, that journal exists. Possibly those entries and that moment exists because of this moment. Anyway, he doesn't address you directly. But he's basically complaining to you about himself. And he's feeling rather terrible about his own actions. He's feeling very guilty here. He's at a low point. Um, we know from Bow Eternal that, you know, he's, he's still having issues dealing with stuff. So if you haven't read the book, if you haven't read the, the short story, it's free. You can find it on Blizzard's site. You can do a quick search for it. I highly recommend it. Um, 
but yeah, so now we're stuck with these three. Anyway, I want to talk to him first because if you talk to him, they're going to talk to each other and then they're both going to leave and we need to talk to him last. It's funny that this one doesn't realize taking multiple versions of yourself to the same place is a bad idea. So he still has bad ideas. <laughs> I mean, we know that from the current expansion. Um, would more would more Rathions actually have helped um, against Nazoth? I don't know. We kind of know what happened. This one doesn't know what happened yet. Actually, this one doesn't know what happened yet either. No one in this room knows actually what happened with Nazoth, except for one thing. If they're aware you're a future version of yourself, which I think they are. But we'll get to him in a moment. Let's talk to him. Because this one's interesting. You don't ever get to meet this one at this point exactly. You get to meet him soon after. But he has a very interesting request. Even though he's focused on... Going after the old gods. He's not focused on the Obsidian Citadel. I don't think. He doesn't mention it. Yeah, no, no, no. He's not. If we went together to my time... See, he's aware. He's not. They're not in his time. Um, he does... But this... One thing, I sent him back already, but Pandaria Rathian, in case you didn't catch it, finds out about the Legion invasion from himself. Um, so we're going to pause for a second. And this is who he finds out from. Himself. So he does hear that part. Misses the part about the old gods. <laughs> Doesn't mention that at all in Pandaria. Though we know old gods are involved because Yashar factors heavily in Mists of Pandaria. Um, the heart he... Well, no, it's not the heart. That's the Thunder King. But, you know, you find the heart of Yashar, that's... You know, Grosh plays around with that. But he basically, when he has his vision of the Legion invading, the point of his whole plan is because he knows the Legion's invading, is going to invade. And at the time, it comes off as kind of like creepy precog, like he's psychic or he gets visions, and not saying he doesn't. But how much of a vision would it be if he found out about the Legion invasion here, at this moment? So he takes that information back with him to Pandaren. He's like, oh, hmm, I got to come up with a plan. This is where he finds out. Probably to heard stuff about the old gods. I'm pretty sure he didn't totally ignore about the old gods, given this, his, his family's history. But yeah. But he's not listening to how upset he will be about it or that he will fuck up the plan. He probably thinks like, well, I'm not going to fuck it up. I know what I'm doing. I'm not going to screw up. That version of me may have screwed it up. He doesn't realize that. No, you're going to screw it up. That's how it's always been. <sighs> anyway, so here we come to this one. I'm not, right, I'm not doing a in age order. I'm doing in how they leave water. Is there something you wish to discuss? Ah, Arlea, glad that you are here. He does, finally, you are actually acknowledged. <laughs> and this one's interesting because it does take into account that both of you know Anduin. So, you have already met. I don't know if people who have not done any of BFA get this dialogue. So I'm going to be keeping an eye out for that to see if that happens. But Ah, Arlea, glad that you are here. I would happily return to my own timeline, but I have a predicament. I need to speak with my old friend, now King of Stormwind, Anduin. I have essential information to share regarding the old gods. Perhaps you could assist me into crafting a letter that will grant me an audience. Quest, help Rathian write a letter. Let me propose this. We already know he doesn't seem to care about meshing timelines because he wants to recruit everyone to go deal with the old gods. Right? 
Would he be so frivolous as to show up in a point of time to get someone to help him write a letter to Anduin? I argue yes. He came here very likely to find you to help him write this letter. I joke with myself that, yeah, but I'm not telling you you can get punched in the face. I'm gonna let, I'm, a, I'm that's still gonna happen. And I'm gonna be still, still there to witness it and laugh. Um, I'm not denying my, that, I'm not denying myself that memory. Anyway, this is before he gets punched in the face. If you need to wear it is in the timeline, it's suggesting he's hanging around Stormwind. because you're sending him to a portal to Stormwind, or maybe it's before that and you have to send him to Stormwind at this point. Not clear. Uh, I find it hard that he's just kind of walking around Stormwind. Not that he looks different, so maybe people don't recognize him yet, but I find it hard to believe that no one's going, hey, dude with the glowing red eyes. <laughs> I don't know. Um... But we know that he does have someone who shows up and escorts him. And we know they send advance notice to Matthias. So let's look at the letter that we have to help write. I'm going to write this without any joking. I'm going to write this as if this actually happened. And this is, you know, you don't have many choices. King Antoine, your most esteemed royal highness, old friend, whoever matters enough to get me an audience with the king. Dear Magni Bronzebeard. <laughs> because I was there and I know exactly what to say. Which, by the way, he knows you were there. Because <laughs> he comes after this. And the contents of this letter? How shall I compose the main text? Straight to the point, I have information regarding the old god's return. Appeal to past adventures with Anduin as justification for his trust. You knocked him on the head unconscious to free Garrosh. <laughs> I wouldn't call that an adventure. Name drop your mutual friend Arlea, who encourages this meeting. Mutual friend. Bribe him with the promises of many fine cloaks. During one of the last times I did this, I did pick that one so I can get a little chuckle with myself anyway. I do want to keep myself entertained. So I'm doing this thing. Uh, name, dropped your, name drop your friend, mutual friend Arlea, who encourages this meeting. This letter could be to either Matthias or it could be to um, Magni. I don't think I would make the suggestion to write it directly to Antoine. I think need, things need to be smoothed over, smoothed, smoothed over, <laughs> given the circumstances under which he shows up again. So it's either going to Matthias or it's going to Magni. Name, but you know what? I, I think my name might actually help smooth things over, so name drop your mutual friend Arleo who encourages this meeting I do encourage this meeting I know this meeting has to happen if nothing for me to watch him get punched in the face all that's left is a signature sincerely Rathian the Black Prince your new official royal advisor which is a callback to Matthias referring to him as advisor um Rathian in quotes, Psst, it's actually Arlea. I'm going to pick that one. Because <laughs> he really does at this point need all the help he can get. Because even with Magni there and Matthias trying very hard to smooth it over, um, and I'm there, uh, he still gets punched in the face. So. Ah, this will do the black dragon you. flight will be redeemed. Yeah, they will be. See you later, bro. And now we're here at later. So now it's just these two. 
I do not share my father's madness. Nope. So he just, same thing, insufferable. So, what we have here is this Rathian, right here, is the one that's sitting in, standing in the Chamber of the Heart, which I may actually do later, because maybe I will do um, Horrific Visions. And it seems to be at the exact point, and you know it's the Chamber of the Heart, because one of the portals says so. By the way, there. Time portal to the Chamber of the Heart. The other one is Time portal to the Obsidian Dragon Shrine. So, he's here. Let's, talk, let's look at him. He's here from the Obsidian Dragon Shrine, which is in Dragonblight. Why is he here? Because he's feeling extremely shitty about what he's done and the consequences of his actions. And I believe the reason why he's here, why he wanted to come back at this point in time, is to stop himself. But apparently he forgot to, re re forgot to remember he never listens to himself. So <laughs> he doesn't even trust his own advice. Um, and it's really sad. He's so desperate, as opposed to flippant as the one who won who just showed up because he needs your help with a letter. I'm going with that story. Um, he hopes that he could actually change what happened. And that's because he doesn't know what happens next, even though a lot of bad things happen. But you know, he got his he got what his his only friend, if you don't count yourself as a player, his father's killed. You know? On top of a huge invasion, lots of other people got killed. Um, he doesn't even know the other fallout from that situation. Vulgen dies, putting Sylvanas in charge. Sylvanas goes and torches Teldrassil. That hasn't happened yet. Uh, yeah, it's... The implications here are, you know, he's... It's pretty sad. He's the only one that has any feelings of guilt here that we know of yet. Um, but yeah, he basically is here because he feels terrible and probably wants to convince himself to not do the things he ended up doing. But as time paradoxes go, if he stops himself, this moment never happens. He never stops himself. Yeah, don't think about it. It'll break your brain. I'm trying not to think about it too hard beyond that point. Um... I wish we got a little bit more time to spend with him. You know? I wish there was a little bit more dialogue. Uh, but... We don't. So that leaves us with... Chamber of the Heart. Which is the last time you see Rathian before this expansion. Well, technically you see him in Nyloth. <laughs> well, no, you see him... You have to turn stuff in in the Chamber of the Heart, so that's the last place you see him for this expansion. Um, but I think and what I wrote here in my notes is um, I think the devs put this Rathian here because a lot of people don't quite get his character. Um, and you can tell from the people that were, were involved, like getting all up in arms over who should who should win the aspect, him or Sibelian. Um, the correct answer was always Abyssian. But <laughs> but even though he hadn't shown up yet at that point. But you know, people writing him off as he's arrogant, he's an asshole, he's they're they're both arrogant and they're both assholes in their own way. Um, one is one is acting out of different motivation. Um, Rathian has never been a simple black or white character. He's never been good or evil. Um, he's he's full of gray areas. He, you know, I'm not going to read the journal now, but it, it's worth looking at the journal on Wowhead because um, he flat out basically admits he deals with people. Val Eternal mentions it too, I think. He deals with people that other you know does not deal with to get things you know done, but it. Anyway, um, I'm not phrasing it properly, but um, he obviously feels guilt for what he did. He admits it, um, and, but he's always kind of been, you know, he's 
never outright lied so much as omitted the truth or not told the whole truth. Like when he said that he was supporting Varian, okay, he did he did lie <laughs> to Horde players um, initially <laughs> in Pandaria, but he wasn't lying to a lot of players. He said he was supporting Varian, and he was entirely. Um, and then switched allegiance that he's with the horde he said they were supporting garage and then switched allegiances and then said i'm a black dragon why did you trust me um but he's never he acts arrogant he's obnoxious he but he's always nice to those he considers his friends if you ignore the knocking into it on the head unconscious thing yes um if you ignore the little minor betrayals that have happened here and there Yes. Um, he's always nice to you. He's always he's always nice to the player. Like he can be an asshole to everyone else around you. He, like he loses his temper in Zara Lake Caverns in the current expansion, and then he apologizes for it. Um, and I was like, if you call that losing? It's like I've seen you worse, buddy. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> that was nothing. I didn't even notice that little bit of attitude you had. Um, but I think back to like how Andum would speak about him in Taverns of the Mist, which unfortunately you can't see anymore, but you can look up the dialogue on on, uh, on Wowhead. Um, and it's after they meet, uh, after Andum gets injured by Garrosh, and he's recovering there. And they're playing the, the board game. And Anduin notes, uh, he says um, he's honest almost painfully so. He says that to Horde players. Um, Alliance, it's a slightly different conversation. Uh, so he's completely honest, yet always hiding something. Yeah. <laughs> I think even lately he's been even more um, honest and pretty upfront. He never really hides what's going on. Um, but anyway, it's good to play both sides because you get all parts of the cut. That, especially in Mr. Pandaria, because you got to like see the Vulgin part of it and you got, yeah, it was really cool. Um, but his existence, this Arathian, is here to remind players that he is self-aware. He is aware of what he's done. He doesn't feel great about it. Um, because apparently folks still need to know that. They don't quite get that part. I think it, it's really clear now what's going, I, you know, what's going on with him. So, anyway. So let's talk to this one. Um... He's the eldest version that's in the room. He's the most recent one, as I said. Uh, maybe only a few months from the one who's writing a letter in the timeline. He's still standing there. You can go see him now if you've gotten that far enough in the quest line. He doesn't want to talk to this version of himself initially in this room. He doesn't want to deal with it. Because right at the end, still dealing with shit. He's still dealing with the consequences of what he's done. But he's got other things in his mind at the moment. <laughs> like trying not to get corrupted. So, you know, he's like, this is more important right now. I don't, I, I don't need my own intrusive thoughts about mistakes I've made bothering me. He's basically trying to suppress his own guilt. By ignoring it. <laughs> this is this is a therapy session. <laughs> so let's talk to him. It seems our fates are intertwined. Well, Arlea, this certainly was not how I expected today to go. Lovely to see you. <laughs> Obviously acknowledging you. And here of all places, looks like I'm destined to find my ancestral home after all. So he Pandaria knew um, Pandaria Rathian uh, knew he was going to end up in the Dragon Isles um, he already knew by that point difficult to tell of whelping content because it doesn't really say anything other than they're all they're all so immature um, but I think him knowing you're here and you're in his future 
he's going to end up here. I think that's where he finally pieces that together, despite everything else that happens in this room, which happens exactly as it always happened. Nothing changed. He's going to end up in the Dragon Isles eventually, and that's why you're here, and that's what you're representing to him. Um, so he has that assurance that whatever he's still dealing with the Nazoth situation, but he knows it's going to work out. That doesn't mean he becomes complacent or doesn't do his little flippity flips and take down the carapace <laughs> thing. He's still going to do that. Um, he just hasn't done it yet. <laughs> but he knows that eventually, he, you know, he, another version, well, I don't know if he knows he himself is going to end up here, but he might. Um, the one thing you don't see is anyone's reaction when they first walked in. Because how did they, I mean, they saw the portals, so they knew they weren't from this time zone. But what you don't know is if he knows there's a version of him there now that's not in the room. But I'm thinking he's just, he, it's easy to make that assumption that the Dragon Isles are open. He's probably there. <laughs> and considering the Pandarian was like, let's take the Obsidian Citadel, he's got intel on what's happening in the Obsidian Citadel. So my guess is they know there's a version of himself that's there that's not in the room. And he knows that if he if this is all happening and it's happened it's always happened this way, it's going he's going to eventually end up there. See, he knows while it looks really bad right now, when it's off invading, there is going to be a good ending to this. Now he's going to take that and he's gonna go apologize to Matthew. Azeroth faces many threats. I suppose maybe with self-apology, I do have a point after all. I know the guilt you carry. I isolated myself a long time because of it, but eventually threats will appear that you cannot ignore. That too will pass. And look how far we've gone. Our essential home thriving and vibrant once more. Despite it all, I'm glad I have a future to look forward to. And that future is so very bright. Remember that the hardship to come, you'll need that for it's off. Excuse me for what? <laughs> you'll find out soon enough. Now I must return. We both have people waiting for us. I wish you would elaborate on that fact. But bye. I think in that point, he reassures himself both ways. He needs the younger version of himself to get his shit together deal with his shit because more important things are going to happen and it takes him a long time he refers to that um, we know from Vow Eternal that it starts off your in media res in a nightmare in one of his nightmares and you find out he's been drinking a lot he's still dealing with that very close to the start of dragon fight but his tendency to isolate himself, he mentions it. He set himself apart. And, um, yeah. Now, of course, like I said, I don't even know if the devs put as much thought into this as I've just <laughs> blabbed at you. I hope it made some sense. Um, but I really like that this quest is in the game, not because I'm a Rathian fan. I obviously am. <laughs> I'm not going to deny that. Uh, but you get to actually see a lot of what's going on in his head and his development and his growth over time. Though it seems at times that the wealth is actually more mature than other versions of than older versions of himself. Um, and I think it helps with a lot of the comments coming out about how he was behaving in Zerla Caverns, um, whispers or no. I think it helps to inform a little bit of that too. Um, in case anyone still wasn't quite sure um, where some of his attitudes were coming from. He has come a long way. Uh, and But the implications here is
this always happened. The present Rathian, the one that's currently, if you've finished all the quests for 10.5, uh, 10.1 rather, um, you've done Abris and all of that, the one that's sitting up at, um, at the, the uh, Throne of the Aspects, uh, sitting up there in his thoughts, um, knows at some point you're going to end up in this inn with five versions of him from different time zones and going to have this conversation. And he has chosen not to be here because he knows he never was. The Black Prince Parade. I'm glad that was taken care of. Imagine if our Rathian had stopped by. I don't think my inn could have handled six of them. I actually am dying to know what the hell he would have said. But I think he knew not to show up. I guess he wasn't there. And by this point, I would say he actually does have enough knowledge to know not to mess with time. 